guys, today we're back to talk about vet school applications. I know that getting animal experience before going to vet school can be very hard. We've certainly all been there. So today I'm going to share with you all my animal experience, including how I got the job, what is it like, and possibly give you some tips to help you get the most out of each opportunity. Before I start, I wanted to know that there are two types of animal experience non-veterinary and veterinary. Generally speaking, veterinary experience is more favorable when you're applying to vet school, which means you will be working under the direct supervision of a licensed veterinarian. But it doesn't mean that non-veterinary experience is not important. A lot of the times, having non-veterinary experience can help you get your first veterinary experience. And if you watch my video on how to get into vet school, I mentioned that vet schools value the diversity of your experience. So if you don't have access to a large animal vet, an exotic vet, a wildlife vet, or a fish vet, you can totally use non-binary experiences to expand that part of your resume. Go work on a bar, a rescue, a sanctuary, a zoo, or an aquarium. A lot of those places are always looking for help. Just go look on their website, give them a call, or even just pop by the place. Getting started is always the hardest part, but once you have stepped your foot in the door, the rest of it would become much easier. My first animal experience was at a horse farm in Beijing when I was 16. I've been riding there since I was very little, so I asked the owners if I could ride the horses for free and work in the stables in return. This was long before me wanted to be a vet. I honestly just wanted to ride the horses and spend less of my parents' money. But throughout my time working there, I came across a few sick horses. And watching the animals suffer really got me thinking that I want to do something to help them. I think I saw some problems in the veterinary field in China and wanted to make a change. A girl can dream, right? <laughs> so after graduating from my high school in Beijing, I came to Canada, ended up in the University of Toronto, studied a little bit of everything, and found out that I actually have a passion for life science. So when I went back to Beijing for my first summer vacation, I asked the animal hospital close to my home if I could get a volunteer opportunity. They asked for my resume, saw that I'm bilingual, and wanted me to work at the front desk. And here's something I want you all to be aware of, is that even though working up front is a very good start and it helps you understand how the hospital operates, it does not count as veterinary experience. Sometimes it's not even considered as animal experience because you're not directly handling any patients. So after a month working up front, I asked if I could switch to the back and assist the vets and technicians, and they were so nice to say yes. And that's when I started to get my actual hands-on experience by learning how to physically restrain an animal, how to administer oral medication, and how to make a sub-Q injection, and etc. So my suggestion to you for getting your first clinical experience is try to start with clinics that you already have a connection with. My dogs have been to this clinic for years. So even though the clinic did not know me personally, they knew my dogs and they knew my mom. And I think it's part of the reason they took me in the first place. And even if you can't get a hands-on job at the beginning, think of this as establishing a good relationship between you and the clinic. Because once they know that you are a responsible individual willing to learn, they will be much more comfortable with you doing slightly more risky tasks, which will be good learning opportunities for you. So that's how I spent my summer vacation after first year of university. Second year vacation, I wanted to get some experience with large animals, especially with horses. Luckily, I have chatted with an equine vet in a tour in Beijing. He gave me his card and told me that he has a friend that runs equine veterinary services in Toronto. So I reached out through email a year and a half after our chat. I knew it was a long shot, but he replied and hooked me up with a clinic on the same day. I was so surprised. So then I started my shouting with the equine beds. It is very different from small animal clinics because it's hard to take horses to the clinic. So most of the large animal beds provide ambulatory services where they keep the drug, the tools, and the machines in their truck. And we would spend most of our time driving around, having a drive through lunch, and trying to make it on time to the next appointment. It was a very intense experience for me, but I learned so much in a very short period of time. 
Unfortunately, after a two week trial period, they felt like I didn't know enough about horses to get the most out of this experience. So they suggested that I come back next year to try again. It was a bit hurtful at the beginning, but I think they have a point. Like, I couldn't tell if the horse is in pain just from the way he's walking. I didn't know how to restrain a horse properly. I didn't know how to read a radiograph. And there were some communication problems as well. So I do respect their decision. And if I ever get a chance to go back now, I'm sure things will turn out differently. So I didn't go back to the equine clinic after my third year. Instead, I went to a small animal vet clinic, and this time I do not have any connection with the place. I went straight to the front desk, handed in my resume and cover letter, and they called me back in two weeks. Different from my first volunteer experience, this time I shadowed one veterinarian eight hours a day for two months. I was with the vet at all his appointments and surgeries. He was such a great mentor to me. He taught me how to read blood work and biochem reports, how to read radiographs, and let me get hands on with the patients. All the other staff were super nice to me too. They would always call for me if there's something interesting going on. I got to see some super cool surgeries thanks to them. It was a very, very pleasant experience for me. I learned so much from them. And if you were to ask me for a trick to maximize learning, I would tell you to have a little notepad about this big to put it in your pocket and always take down what your vet says and writes. I do some research on the disease in your free time and I also like to look up the surgeries scheduled for the next day because if I don't do that, I wouldn't have any idea what the procedure means or does when I'm actually standing in front of the operation table. So that's always good to do. And it's also a way to show your vet your dedication to learn. You know, impress your vet if you are trying to get a reference letter from them. So at this point, I have gotten small and large animal experience. I went to talk to the admission office of ABC and they suggested that I get some other types of experience, just like what I'm telling you now. So I went back to Toronto and signed up for a year of weekend shifts at the Toronto Wildlife Center. The main part of my job is to prep the food for the recovering wildlife animals and check on how they're doing in the enclosure. Although most of them are scared of humans, there are always some curious guys that like to come up to you and say hello. And we're not supposed to take photos or come close to them, but I really just can't resist sometimes. So I did that for a year, even after handing in my vet school application, and now I'm still volunteering my time to take care of the wildlife patients in our hospital because I simply enjoy doing it. And I may continue even after becoming a veterinarian. Who knows? All right, I have just covered all my pre-med experiences. I'm sure there are other students out there that got in with a completely different story, but I hope you enjoyed my version of it. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time. Bye.